Yo, today I'm going to walk you through setting up uh, AWS Lambda and connecting it with RDS. Uh, so we're going to be using MySQL and uh, Python as well for our Lambda. All right, so let's get started. First thing you got to do is go to aws.com. And all right, so first we're going to make our RDS database. And then after that, we'll make our Lambda, which is going to connect to that database. Uh, so you can just search RDS here and you'll find it. Uh, because I use it a lot, it's in my recently visited. And once it loads, you just want to hit uh, create a database. So I'm going to click here into my database instances and just click create database. So yeah, anywhere it said create database, just click that. And you will you should open up uh, this page here. So we're going to do standard create. We're using MySQL. They have a bunch of other engines you can use as well. Uh, for templates, I'm just going to leave it as is. This is uh, deployment options. I don't want cluster. That's going to create three. I just want one uh, database instance. Um, okay, so next. This is important that you don't forget your username. Uh, so I'm going to leave it as... So I'm going to leave my username as admin. And then for master password, make sure to write a password that you're going to remember. So I'm just going to put password, but you know, make a real password and write this down because if you forget it, you'll have to make the database all over again. I don't think there's a way to, to get the password back. All right. So I'm going to leave the rest of this as is, um, all right. So then this section where it says public access, I'm going to pick yes, it's going to make this uh, tutorial a lot easier to go through. Um, you can do private access and then you'll have to make sure that the Lambda is connected with this VPC. Um, but just to simplify things, let's use uh, public access. All right, and then just click create database. All right, so close that and uh, you'll see your database is being created. It usually takes a few minutes. Um, all right, so while that's creating, let's uh, minimize this and go to your desktop and make a new folder. All right, so as you can see, this folder is gonna be our Lambda dependencies. So open this folder up, and if you're in Windows, write uh, CMD in the folder. That's just a shortcut to get to the command line and it's gonna be inside the same directory. If you're on Mac, you can just use a terminal and you can use the same commands I'm pretty sure that I'm using. And uh, yeah, all we're gonna do is install the dependencies. So there's just one that we need. pip install, and it's uh, my SQL connector Python. All right, so we're going to install uh, MySQL Connector Python. I like to use version 8.0.26 because that works well for me. Um, I recommend using that version. Also, it, it ends up being a smaller uh, smaller file size. There is there is a certain limit to how much uh, you can upload into Lambda uh, the way I'm going to show you. And then just add this uh, dash T and then uh, this full stop. So that way it will install inside of our folder. So enter. All right, so it looks like it finished. Let's just make sure it installed, it did. All right, so let's go back to AWS. All right, it looks like the database is still configuring. Um, while it's configuring, let's make a new Lambda. Uh, so just go to Lambda and click on Create Function. All right, now give your function a name. So we'll call it RDS to Lambda Demo. Uh, runtime, we're going to be using Python. So let's just click select the latest version, and that's it. There's uh, other settings you can configure with the VP VPC in advanced settings, but I'm just leaving this exactly how it is. So then just create your function. All right, now that our function's created, scroll down to the code section. 
and you'll notice we have uh, lambda function dot p py uh, and by default it has this um, inside of it, it has lambda handler and if you scroll down to the handler section you see it's lambda function and then uh, period and then lambda handler so lambda function is the the uh, python file and then lambda handler is going to be the function that's going to get executed by this so if you change the python file name or you change this function's name you'll need to edit that here i'm not going to change any of the names to make this easy so just copy all of this to help us get started with our python and open up uh, whatever editor you want to use just going to use notepad since i'm literally just going to copy this in here and and let's find that same exact folder we were just working on so yeah it was called lambda dependencies and the file was called lambda function and we need to save it as a py all right so let's see there we go we have our python file so now we have everything we need to upload this to aws you you need to zip it to a yeah you need to make it into a zip file that's the only other thing you need to do you can't upload it like this so there we go we're going to upload this one into 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 our lambda so click upload from and then pick zip file and then select upload and pick this zip file you just made and you can see it can't be larger than 10 megabytes so picking this uh this version uh 8.0.26 uh, it definitely it helps with keeping just what we really need. Um, I think it's also a better version of MySQL Python connector. All right, so next thing, this is also an important step. Uh, when you upload like this, you end up getting these uh, two folders here. You get RDS to Lambda demo, and then you get Lambda de dependencies. And you can see the way the handler is set up. It's not going to be able to reach our lambda function so we need to move everything up you see that so we moved everything up so it's no longer in this lambda dependencies folder this folder has nothing in it we can actually delete it and everything's been moved into our main folder the actual lambda function so so now it can access our Python file and all the dependencies in here too. All right, so just click deploy. Let's just click test to make sure everything is working so far in the Lambda. So if we click test, we get status code 200. Hello from Lambda. So that means everything's good. One more thing, just to make sure that your dependencies are working. So I just added import mysql.connector and that's to see if, if this wasn't done successfully it's going to give us an error so that means we're able to use mysql connector so that's great uh next it looks like our database is available so we're all set up to to start writing a connection string to rds and then actually making to make some changes like for example uh making a database inside of here making some tables inserting things to those tables reading them see so yeah, i'll give you a basic tutorial all right, so I just pasted this in that I wrote earlier. So this is to connect to the RDS database. So we have this variable, and we're doing mysql.connector.connect, and we need host, and you got to enter your host. I'll show you just in a second where to get that. Uh, user is admin, and then password, enter. Remember that password from earlier when we were creating the RDS? Enter in that password. Um, and same with admin if you just left it as is it's admin maybe you change the user to something else then enter that here um all right so go back to rds uh and you see this database we just created click into it 
and uh, in the connectivity and security section, you're going to have the endpoint. Also, you'll have your port, which you might need later, but if you left it as a default port, uh, you can leave this out. So the port's 3306, which is the default one. So under host, we'll delete this and paste in what we just got. All right, so next, I'm making this variable. I'm just going to call it my database. And we're inserting it here into this uh, string. And that's going to be create database if uh, not exists. Um, you know, let's make this simpler. Let's just, uh, we don't need. Yeah, so we have a uh, create database query, and it's just going to be uh, create database, if not exists, my database. So that's what our database is going to be called, my database. And we're going to execute that query. Next thing is you just close all the connections and close this connection string, and, and that's it. So if we run this, should get no errors, and we're going to we're going to have a new database created. One thing I forgot, we have to define this uh, cursor. So cursor is just this uh, connection dot cursor. Okay, so there was no errors when we ran that, so our database should be created. Um, all right, so I'm going to add one more argument to this now, because now that we have a database, I'm going to put my database as what we're going to be connecting into and making our tables, entering data into all of that stuff. And we actually don't need these two lines anymore, so let's just comment them out. All right, so now we're going to write a query, table exists query, and it's just going to be show tables, like, and I'm going to make a table called cool stuff. And we're going to do uh, cursor.execute table exists query and then table exists cursor.fetch1. So this is just going to, this is going to be used in our if to check if there's a table. And if not, we're going to make one. All right. So if, if not table exists, we're going to create, uh, so if the table doesn't exist, we're going to do this create table, cool stuff. And it's going to have an ID as the primary key. And we're going to have uh, a column one var card, which is going to be var card two fifty five. So this is just like SQL. Uh, let's change the column one name though to um, cool cool things coolness, and we'll make that an int. Yeah, so that should be it. Now you can deploy this and we'll run this and our table will get created. Every time you make changes in Lambda, you got to hit deploy. That's like the save button. It looks like there's a bit of an error. I just need to... Okay, so we fixed it. Uh, there was a bit of an error where this first part where it said show tables, like cool stuff, I had to put it inside of quotes. So there's a single quote and then this was in quotes. Um, I just ran it and and it gave us no errors, so that means our table was created. So we have this new table, cool stuff. All right, so you have, we have this uh, string here, insert into cool stuff, and then we're gonna, this is cool things, the first column, and then coolness score. And then here we have our values we're going to insert into. So let's change these from value one to value two. So, so we'll have motorcycle, and maybe that has a score of, let's say nine. So no errors. So uh, we have our query, we have the values we want to insert, then we execute it, and then you have to do this, whatever the connection string was, dot commit. And then we close it, and we close that one as well. Um, let's try adding some other values in. So helicopter, we'll give it a 10. Uh, software developer, I'm going to give like a six seven yeah we'll do seven all right so we entered a bunch of values now let's say you don't want to enter any more values so we're going to comment all of these out and let's say you just want to see uh what's what's in your table 
All right, so you, if you want to select everything, you just write a select query, so select everything from cool stuff, you execute that, then you store it in results, and then we need to go through that, and um, and we append it to this uh, variable table data, and then table data, we need to convert it to JSON. Uh, we need to convert it to JSON, so for this return section, we can replace this uh, JSON part where it says hello from lambda just delete that instead we'll put this uh, table data variable we just made if we click test you can see uh, we have all of those uh, columns we entered like motorcycle helicopter software developer AWS and then we also have the coolness score that we assigned to them I noticed one thing we had those as column one column two so maybe we'll give them a bit better name so we could call it thing and we can call this score so now you have all your things here and uh we have a bit better names for them yeah so that's pretty much it so basically what we went through is how do we connect how do we write this connection string in python uh making the cursor we went through creating a database creating the tables uh we went through inserting data into the table how to select and output the results from the table and we did it all inside of lambda so you can go a lot further with this you can add triggers to this you can schedule it you can have like if certain events happen data gets entered in uh, this is just very basic, but it, hopefully it gives you some ideas. And we also went through setting up a basic RDS database and then connecting it to Lambda. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's pretty much it.